listen to the word which God has spoken. Listen to the one who is close at hand. Listen to the voice which began creation. Listen even if you don't understand. Welcome. May the peace of God which passes all understanding be with us all. Hello again and welcome to this gathering wherever you are as we gather together as this part, these parts of God's church. Today as we continue to consider what it means to be the church in uncertain times, I'm offering us this time and space to listen to God. If we want to follow Jesus, we need to discern what Jesus is calling us to be and to do. If we want the Holy Spirit to guide us, we need to be open to the Holy Spirit influencing us. If we want to encounter the living God, we need to stop, look and listen to God at work in the world around us. And we're doing it accompanied by this wee song from our sisters and brothers in the church in Canada, which is in our hymn book at number 780. And we're using a recording from Duffus Kirk in 2017. We are listening to the church family too. Listen to the word which God has spoken. Listen to the one who is close at hand. Listen to the voice which began creation. Listen even if you don't understand. Listen to the word which God has spoken. Listen to the one who is close at hand. Listen to the voice which began creation. We're considering church life in uncertain times, following the book of Acts, some of the stories of the early church. Today let's hear some of the story from Acts chapter 5, starting at verse 12 through to verse 42. Many miracles and wonders were being performed among the people by the apostles. All the believers met together in Solomon's porch. Nobody outside the group dared join them, even though the people spoke highly of them. But more and more people were added to the group, a group of men and women who believed in the Lord. As a result of what the apostles were doing, sick people were carried out into the streets and placed on beds and mats so that at least Peter's shadow might fall on some of them as, they, as he passed by. And crowds of people came in from the towns around Jerusalem, bringing those who were sick or who had evil spirits in them, and they were all healed. There's a great wee summary of the church here, a crowd of women and men who believed in the Lord. I love that. And they are listening to God through the experience of those who had listened and learned from Jesus directly. And they are looking at what God is doing and learning from that. The story continues. Then the high priest and all his companions, members of the local party of the Sadducees, became extremely jealous of the apostles, so they decided to take action. They arrested the apostles and put them in the public jail. But that night an angel of the Lord opened the prison gates, led the apostles out and said to them, Go and stand in the temple and tell the people all about this new life. The apostles obeyed, and at dawn they entered the temple and started teaching. Here we find something very mysterious, but apparently very clear to listen to. A messenger from God with a very direct instruction. So those who had just been miraculously freed from jail listen and follow that instruction, to go and stand in the temple and tell people all about the new life God is giving them. To summarise the next part of the story, the high priest calls the religious leaders together to deal with Jesus' followers, but discover they're no longer in jail, but are back in the temple, teaching. They're not happy about that. They'd ordered the apostles not to teach about Jesus. Peter and the other believers defend themselves, saying, we must obey God, not human beings. And they repeat what they have seen of Jesus' life, death and resurrection. Then one of the religious leaders, a man named Gamaliel, offers his wisdom. 
based on experience of previous rebel leaders who challenged the status quo. After those leaders were killed, their movements had disappeared. Gamaliel concludes, And so in this case I tell you, do not take any action against these men. Leave them alone. If what they have planned and done is of human origin, it will disappear. But if it comes from God, you cannot possibly defeat them. You could find yourselves fighting against God. The council followed Gamaliel's advice. They called the apostles in, had them whipped, and ordered them never again to speak in the name of Jesus. And then they set them free. As the apostles left the council, they were happy, because God had considered them worthy to suffer disgrace for the sake of Jesus. And every day in the temple and in people's homes, they continued to teach and preach the good news about Jesus the Messiah. Amen. The key issue becomes discerning what God wants. If Jesus' followers are indeed hearing God calling, guiding and sending them, then they will endure as a living movement. If they are not, it will fizzle out as other movements have. And here we still are, nearly 2,000 years later. So I think God might be in this Jesus movement. But to discern what God wants needs us to listen. Listen for God calling and inviting us. Listen for God's guidance and gifts. Listen for where God is sending us. Listen through the experience of other people. That includes listening to those whose experiences are told in the Bible. And we should listen to people from here and now, people of faith, listening to people's experiences of the living God at work. We can listen through creation, including the birds and bees, the seas and skies, plants and animals, for God is at work in all of creation. Listen through nudges and niggles, through dreams and visions, where we may hear an, an angel of the Lord or know the breath of life in the Holy Spirit. God invites us to listen, for God is always wanting to engage with us. So let's stop and look and listen just now. God, we open ourselves to you. God, we are listening.